Now that it's like day five of this, what I do in a day vlog, let's answer some of your questions. But to make it a little more interesting, I'm gonna make some of my own Studio XLR cables on my own. You'll see how I do it. And uh, I'll go through some of your questions. And I'll show you what I used. Bye. Bye, beautiful desk. Bye. All right, I really hope it's not gonna rain. Let's check out some of these questions here. First comment from Ribhub at uh, Ch Cheria 78. Ever wanted to try recording metal songs in your studio? Yes. Uh, I haven't really yet. Not what I would consider metal. I've done some like kind of harder rock stuff. Like I haven't done metal yet. Yeah. Okay, next one is from Carson1043. What does your typical music production day look like start to finish? It always starts with a good plan and a good understanding of what it is you're trying to accomplish. And then following the plan as closely as possible to get the results you want as efficiently as possible. Now, I know that's kind of vague, but that's literally, that's literally it. Having a good plan and being prepared is everything. But you know, it's it's anything between getting like a scratch track or the bare bones of the song structure down, whether that's on a guitar or keys and maybe some percussion, like a loop or something going through. And then throwing down scratch vocals or main vocal take all the way through. And then sometimes we'll balance that by going back and actually tracking out the instruments if we're doing live tracking, which generally we are. That's my favorite thing to do. I actually put microphones on instruments. Since picking out the right sounds for the song is crucially important, but doing it in a spirit where you're still being productive. That's generally just sort of a, a framework for the music production or sessions that I do. Hopefully that's helpful. Hey. Oh, watch your step. It's um, E power chord, D major, and the A power chord. Whoa, 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 whoa. You trying to get me a copyright claim, boy? <laughs> now, if you've never made cables before, it's very simple to do. It's just a little bit of a skill in the soldering side of it. But let me show you what I got here. I'll show you. But check it out. This is the best, best, absolute best wire in my opinion. So you have two times the amount of signal that actually goes through the cable and they're individually insulated. So you have double insulated cable. Okay, let's go through the tools that we're gonna need here. Very, very simple. We have our strippers for stripping our Canary wire. Uh, courtesy Sweetwater.com. Cable finding section. You can find the exact types of wire you want and the exact connectors, instrument cable, XLR balance, the whole thing. This is Canary wire. This is a quad cable. Other tools are soldering kit. You can see here, this has, this one's actually really awesome because it has the iron, has your tips, has these little clamps to hold your connectors. Solder is right here on it, ready to grab. And then our vise. I'll put links to this stuff down in the description if you're interested in making your own. And of course, a knife. My wife loves that I have so many knives. Moves them around. Uh, okay, the next thing you're gonna need outside of wire are connectors. So. These are the connectors I use. These are Neutrik XLR connectors, male and female, for each side of the cable. So if I open this up, you got the booty, the bottom of the connector. You have the actual tips that you're gonna be soldering to, and they're labeled one, two, three. One is the ground, two is the hot, right here, and three is the cold. And you just wanna make sure that the wires match up on the actual connectors for both male and female because um, they switch sides obviously when they go into each other they have to be mirrored connections and then we have the housing for it right here and this just kind of holds the connections in place so that they don't bend these are literally the strongest connectors you can get if you're making your own i use these on all my cables canary wire neutric connectors 
and then these tools. I'll put links to them down in the description. Thank you, Sweetwater, for sponsoring this video. All right, now when I measure these, I do them very, very loosely. So I'm gonna do uh, 20, 20 feet. I'm about six feet tall, so I do them in wingspans. So I'm gonna lay the spool down and just pull one wingspan. Our strippers to cut it. By the way, this kit is so useful for so many things in the studio. You should definitely have one of these in your studio. There are so many different little heads on here that are like this one is just a little pointy tip and I use it to unthread the ground. Look at the ground on this wire. It's literally braided. I don't know if that's in focus, but it's braided. This is like the strongest shielding grounded ground that you can get that I've ever used on uh, any XLR cable. It actually takes a couple minutes to sort of unbraid part that you're gonna be soldering to actually get through it. So this tip works really, really well to open it all up. Aiden Keith Glow, how to keep everything up to a professional standard when switching between a bunch of special specialist roles. The first part, how do you keep everything up to its professional standard? I mean, that's fairly simple, just do a good job. I think the way I operate has a lot to do with coming up at a commercial studio, starting at the bottom, meaning that the studio had to be what we called zeroed every night. Like everything had to be put back to its original state, cleaned, restocked. I still apply that philosophy to my studio in my house. Do you feel like you're still able to progress your skills in each role? Does it feel like you're maintaining? That's a good question. Uh, I think it depends on how you structure your day. So what I do is I structure my day in sort of like half hour to one hour increments. That way I can cover a lot of bases and make progress on a lot of different things. I also work six, seven days a week. Now lately we just switched to six days a week. So my wife and I can have Mondays together. I was doing seven days a week, which you know, with the hours that I do, I can get a lot done. And in within that work day, I will schedule, I'll literally schedule in like playing drums and uh, playing instruments and recording things and writing music and stuff like that. And I think that really does a good job of keeping you on your toes. And because, hey Rob, because I am constantly testing different gear, I actually probably get to spend more time than I ever did before. Because when you're working on sessions on the day-to-day, -day, you just have to go. There's, you don't really get time to experiment. So now I get to experiment much more and I get to document it so I can actually go back and remember what it sounded like. All right, this was a three-part question. Last part was, uh, would love to know your thoughts on how people do this to kind of mix work and market themselves. Start a YouTube channel, film it, put it online. I mean, I'm not kidding. I went through this discovery myself where I said, that's stupid, I'm not gonna do that. That is, you know, only people who can't do this for a living do that kind of thing, or that's, you know, I don't know. There was all, all these sort of limited beliefs that I had on, you know, what making content and posting to social media w and how that would be interpreted. But I was really, I was just projecting my own thoughts onto it because the second I started doing it, people find it and they people are excited to find things that they relate to. And people are v so much nicer than you imagine they were. Cause th that's another big part of it is like, what are people gonna think? You know, you gotta just ignore that stuff and get past it, move on. Do, your, do what you do, do what you love and film it and put it out there. The skills of posting content as far as uh, filming, editing, you know, it's the same as the skills of learning recording or mus being a musician. It takes time, practice, it costs money, it's not fast, it's hard work, um, but it can open a lot of doors that you didn't even know were like potentials in your life. So I think it's one of the best resources that musicians and people in the music industry have available now. And if you don't take advantage of it, such a, such a big um, miss. But if you wanna do it, you absolutely should. Okay, here's a good one from Dupe Studio. I love the multiple ideas of your daily structure. I'd also be curious the timelines for working, i.e. when do you work with musicians specifically in the day or evening? How do you balance that with daily life? Also, any ideas for starting a studio in central Illinois? Wow, since I live close to your hometown, crazy. Either way, I'm a huge fan and you're crushing it, man. Thank you, Dupe Studios, 914. 
4914. The scheduling thing is always evolving, you know, because we're always evolving and what we do is always evolving. I can tell you what I'm doing now. It took a while to get here. When I first moved here, I actually just needed to make money right away. So I was doing a mixture of side work. Uh, I drove for Uber right when I first moved here because I, I didn't know anyone. I didn't have anything going. I gave up my whole network. By the way, put the connector on, look at this. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, meeting people is a absolutely huge part of it. Also just having your act together, being professional, having a place to go. And if you don't have a place to go, finding a place to work and getting someone to trust you and the best way that that's gonna happen, the most realistic way is by doing free work. Um, so offering yourself up and then just doing a kick-ass job at it and being like undeniable where they kn they realize they want you to be around and need you to be around. And then maintaining a family work life balance, whatever your situation is, and you're just gonna have to find the best way to do it. For me to be able to do an insane amount of work, I just wake up really early now. 3.30, 4 o'clock lately, I'll, I will go straight upstairs, water, coffee, try to knock out a lot of different things. I break things down into half hour segments. I have a bunch of goals that I'm trying to accomplish, so I have to break them down and learn a lot of things about how to do them. I have to actually put a lot of time into doing it. One of those things is I'm working on a video course that is gonna be educational in nature and it takes a lot of work. And there's a bunch of things about doing that that I have no experience in, so uh, I spend a good amount of time every single day working on that. I want it to be insanely awesome. I want it to be like, if I were 15 and I got my hands on this course, I would just be like light years ahead of everyone else. And uh, so I'm putting a lot of work into that. Keeping up this channel, uh, this channel is basically the funnel for 100% of my business now. Uh, it wasn't, I did it for free. And actually I spent a lot of money that I, that was a giant risk to do, but I had faith that it would be worth it and would essentially grant me autonomy with what I wanna do and allow me to do anything that I wanted to do. And it did. So if you're looking for motivation to make some content uh, and you're motivated and you like a challenge and you like doing things that are risky, then I strongly encourage you to do this because you absolutely can. Um, so yeah, I start early, I'll stop around noon, make lunch with the family, we sit and eat and then we hang out. We always play games together at lunchtime and then we'll do family uh, hang, I hang out with my son, Jack. We play music and learn new songs together every single day. He's become an unbelievable creative person, artistically as a musician, so smart. So we hang out until like 12 to five or so. And then I'll come back up and I'll do a little bit of work and usually like another hour work and then I'll do some chores around the house. I like wind down at seven and try to plan my next day. I think it's really, really crucial for me to take an hour or so before I go to sleep every night and plan and think through the next day. So uh, that's, that's kind of the, the repetition of every single day. Couple questions on here about income. How much of your income is YouTube versus music? If you feel comfortable sharing that, this is from Anthony Kronk. I know that you actively work in music and not just YouTube, that would be awesome to have that insight. Yeah, honestly, now it's 100% my business, which the majority of that revenue is now just YouTube. It started to lean, you know, it was all from client work when I started. And then when YouTube started, it got monetized. The channel was 2020, February, 2020 and I made $200 my first month. <laughs> and I got a sponsor with DistroKid. And I was so excited, I made basically 450 bucks that month. And it was like the most motivation I've ever had because I went from making zero money and spending so much time on these videos to make 450 bucks. And every month after that, it continued to grow. What it allowed me to do is basically allowed me to say no to client work and then it allowed me to really think about how and what I wanted to work on, how much time, 
what are my long-term goals, and that has been, just been the greatest gift in the entire world. So now when I work on music, I only work on music that I want to work on. Sometimes I'll still do occasionally, if it'll be like someone I really, really like that I've worked with before, I'll do client work, but it's it's so rare now. It's The business is 100% pretty much 100% YouTube. Um, you know, I have consulting on my website. People can book consultation calls. I have the drum sample pack, YouTube ad revenue from these videos, sponsors. I'm gonna be launching the video course, maybe merch at some point. I don't know how to do merch, but I feel like that would be really fun. Some coffee mugs, a hat, it has to be a hat, right? Once you have something like a YouTube channel where you have an audience and people who are kind enough to watch your videos, I mean, it's really up to you how you wanna make money and how much, you, it's 100% up to you. So yeah, the music thing is now just 100% passion. I still record, uh, not daily, um, but I would say 30% of the week, 30, 40% of the week has recording happening and it definitely music creation and always playing music. We play every day in the family. Um, but yeah, the work, it, it's just basically allowed me to have the freedom to just do passion projects and work with the people I really admire. I'm extremely grateful for that. So, um, and not everyone wants to do this. Maybe, maybe you want to be like just slamming out clients. I actually, um, I did that for a while and, uh, you know, it's not always glamorous. A lot of the times you're working on music that you don't love and maybe even the people you're working with, it's not great. Uh, I've worked on a, I've had the luxury of working on huge, incredible records with some of the like, artists I never dreamed of working with. Weezer was a crazy one. We did the White Album live, the whole band in the room to tape um, at East West Studio 2. And then Jake, who produced that record, gave me the two inch tape, which was just amazing. That was a really good session. Um, worked with John Legend and Blake Mills. Those were incredible records. Um, and then those were long ones. We did, I worked with Blake on three albums in a row. Um, we did John Legend, Dawes, and Jim James. And then uh, I got to work with my friend Will, uh, Greasy Will, if you've seen him on Instagram and TikTok, uh, and we did uh, this band, The Shadow Boxers, with Justin Timberlake producing. That was a ton of fun. That was like right after I left LA. I came back for that one. Um, but a lot of the big records I worked on, I didn't get credit on, and that is really, really common in the industry. Uh, it's unfortunate, and there's nothing you can really do after it's come out, so. Um, that's a bummer. One of the records I've worked on and I engineered and did a, a t put like weeks of my life in, um, actually won a Grammy and I didn't get, my name wasn't even on the record. They're, they basically put like three names on the record. I don't know how, I don't know how artists even get away with that. Um, or if that's like an, just a massive oversight. Um, but I'm really grateful for the work that I get to do now. I absolutely love recording as an art. I love music production. I think it's my favorite thing to explore. I'm obsessed. I mean, I'm up in this studio so much of my time. Um, and because of you guys, I get to do this every single day. And uh, I try to try my best to share as much value with you and keep the videos fun. And I hope you love them. If you do, subscribe, like, leave a comment, drop a question down below. Maybe I'll do another one of these. And uh, yeah, I appreciate all of you guys watching. See you in the next one.